Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of the horror thriller films from 2016, titled Scare Campaign. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. At the start of the movie, we are shown several CCTV shots of a building. It is night time, and the place looks to be empty. A man named George emerges from his car, and enters the same building. It is revealed that the place is a morgue, and he is here to work as a security guard. Since it's his first night, a female employee shows him around the place. They then come across an angry-looking doctor named Susie, but she doesn't say anything. Following this, the female employee leads George to the bag and tag area where the corpses are handled. If they get a case, all George has to do is open the main gate, and will the corpse to this room. As the two continue chatting, the woman asks George if he is easily scared, so he vehemently replies with a no, saying he is used to it. He appears to be a tough nut who isn't intimated so easily, but the woman explains that people have seen paranormal stuff in this room, for instance, she once saw a dead body sit upright. She also reveals that the previous guard quit almost immediately after his first night. Here George notices some hair stuck on the bone saw, but he decides not to talk about it. The female employee then leads him to his booth, she shows him around, writes down her number on a piece of paper, and leaves. The scene then cuts to a few hours later, and we see a mysterious figure in the camera feed, while George has already fallen asleep on his first day of work. He wakes up when the person buzzes the door, and lets him in. He then goes to the entrance to greet the person, but only finds a corpse bag, and it appears that the person has already left the building. George slowly wheels the corpse through the elevator, and eventually brings it to the bag and tag room. But then, the corpse suddenly comes to life and sits in an upright position. George is terrified by the sight, but he still decides to check on the corpse. He slowly unzips the bag to find a deceased girl inside. And then all of a sudden, she comes to life, which sends George into a state of panic. He dials the female employee's number from inside his booth, and explains the entire predicament to her, but she assumes that he is joking. George then turns his attention towards the video feed, where he notices the dead girl approaching him in an eerie manner. A few seconds later, she arrives outside George's booth, scaring the life out of him. Meanwhile, the female employee is in the control room, and it is revealed that she and her team are filming a prank. Her name is Emma, and the operation is spearheaded by a guy named Marcus, and his assistant, Dick. Moreover, the ghost girl is a paid actress named Ayaka. The three appear to be having a good time as they play scary noises in George's booth, but their expressions quickly change when he pulls out a gun. Emma uses the intercom to quickly alert Ayaka of the danger, but the girl is off comms, so Emma has no choice but to rush to the scene herself. Marcus orders the rest of the team, Susie, Tony, and JD to stand down. Later, Tony and Susie are preparing to reveal themselves, and then Ayaka confronts George, screaming at him demonically. Before he can shoot her dead, Emma arrives in the nick of time, and reveals that it is just a prank. When she takes the gun from him, she discovers that it's just a toy. Marcus and the team arrive there, and the camera focuses on his pants, revealing that it has been stained with piss. Emma then reveals that George is on Scare Campaign, a popular TV show, but we can clearly see the anger in her face as she walks away. The scene then cuts to a casting session where a girl named Abby, is being interviewed by Marcus for the position of the new horror girl of the show. He asks her several questions, and even makes her scream to check her acting skills. Abby turns out to be a natural, so Marcus immediately hires her. Marcus then receives a call from their boss, Vicky, who wants to conduct an urgent meeting. Following this, he heads to Dick's room, where the latter is showcasing some of his edits. Upon seeing this, Emma abruptly says that she's quitting, so Marcus sends Dick out of the room. Emma complains that she is tired of the risky pranks they have been pulling as of late, she fears that someday, they will cross paths with the wrong guy, and end up in trouble. However, Marcus claims that a prank becomes even better if it goes slightly off script, and then persuades her to work until the end of the season. It is revealed that the two used to be a couple, and they are still close to this day. A while later, 
the team gathers at the meeting room and discusses their next prank. Marcus reveals that they will be shooting at an abandoned mental asylum, which was apparently closed in the 90s. Moments later, Vicky arrives with some important news. She accesses a website on the dark web named Masked Freaks, which has several videos. She then opens one of them, and a fake human sacrifice clip starts playing. The team bursts out in laughter upon watching it, as they believe that the acting is horrible. However, Vicky says that the real purpose of the video is about to begin, right when some creepy figures in masks surround the actors, and brutally kill them one by one. The whole thing seems to be 100% legit. Marcus and his team members are horrified by what they have just seen, but Vicky reveals that the masked freaks have become very popular among the young generation. People are actually paying a lot of cash to watch this, and she explains that the channel has already amassed over 15 million subscribers. She also goes on a rant about how her show, Scare Campaign is going down the hill. She talks about the poor ratings and average episodes, and then gives Marcus and his team one final chance to come up with something good. If the next episode receives negative responses, she threatens to cancel the show altogether. With this, the team is left in a very difficult situation, they know that they have to make their next attempt a great one. In the next scene, we are taken to the abandoned asylum, where the team has set up all their devices. Several cameras are placed across the rooms, so that every inch of the drama can be captured. Meanwhile, the new girl, Abby, is given makeup to make her look like a ghost. Emma is still concerned about the prank, and she asks Marcus several questions about their new victim. However, he assures her that everything is under control. Shortly after, the new victim, Rohan, arrives at the asylum. Dick spots him from the cameras, and alerts everyone to get into position, and they begin their comeback episode. Emma, who appears to have the lead role, dresses up as a nurse, and approaches him in the garden. He is too busy staring at the garden, and he reveals that he used to work here. Slightly worried, Emma explains that they are going to open up a children's therapy center in a few months, so they will be needing a groundskeeper here. As she continues talking, Rohan notices the ghost girl Abby by the window. Susie, who is dressed up as a gardener, distracts him, and when Rohan looks at the window again, he finds no one. Shocked, he asks Emma if the girl is one of their patients, but she reveals that they haven't taken anyone in yet. She leads him to her office for an interview, and pretends to open a letter on the desk, using a letter opener. Here, Rohan says that he knows every nook and corner of this place, and claims that this asylum used to be his home. He sees a picture on the wall, and starts murmuring to himself. When Emma asks what he's doing, he shouts at her angrily, asking her to mind her own business. Just then, the phone rings, and Marcus explains that Rohan is a special case, but if they can get through with the episode, it will be a huge success. Emma tries to persuade him to stop, but he abruptly cuts the call. Enraged, she goes to confront him, leaving Rohan alone in the room. Marcus then begins the next phase of the prank. He and Dick open the door, and play the scary noises of a little girl, which lure Rohan out of the room. The creepy guy then follows the noises. <laughs> Susie gets the signal, and directs Rohan's attention with a ball to Abby, until he spots the ghost girl. He doesn't appear to be intimidated at all, as he shockingly starts following her, while Marcus and the team are monitoring their moves. Shortly after, he arrives at a creepy-looking room upstairs, where cameraman Tony is hiding behind a rack. At this point, Emma is also watching the events unfold through the computer screen. Marcus then initiates the final phase, which involves Abby confronting the victim. But just when he gives the green light, Emma notices that the sharp letter opener from her room is missing, so she tries to stop the prank, but it's too late. As soon as Rohan sees the ghost girl, he brings out his weapon and stabs her repeatedly. This sends the crew members into a state of shock and they desperately shout at the intercom to stop. However, Rohan doesn't listen. He instead turns his attention to the cameraman Tony, and slowly approaches him, before brutally strangling him. Having had enough, Emma rushes to the room to help her friends with a screwdriver as a weapon. But when she arrives there, she discovers Tony hanged dead, and Abby is thrown out the window. 
Marcus then talks to her through the intercom, and warns her to run away. Since he has cameras all over the place, he has seen Rohan coming towards her, and a lengthy chase ensues between the two. Emma asks about Rohan's history, and Marcus finally discloses that he was a patient at the asylum, he had actually committed some brutal crimes. Hearing this, Emma curses at him while continuing on her way. Shortly after, she arrives at a dark room, and asks for directions when she notices a camera, but Marcus says that they didn't install any cameras there. Terrified, she runs away upstairs, until she comes across one of the crewmates, Susie. The latter lets her inside the room, but before Emma can explain the entire situation to her. <laughs> Rohan breaks through the door and brutally kills Susie on the spot. Emma watches this unfold right in front of her eyes, but she doesn't have the time to mourn. She quickly runs away from there, and the chase continues. After a while, he corners her against a locked door, and is about to kill her. But fortunately, JD opens the door and saves her. The two then bar the door, and wait for the killer to leave. They then contact Marcus and Dick at the control room, and Emma desperately requests them to call the police, but they reason that they are trying to sort out the legal issues first. Suddenly, the killer enters their room, and butchers them one by one. Emma and JD watch this unfold from the camera, but they are powerless to intervene. Realizing that they might be the next victims if they don't act soon, the two decide to make a run for it. They rush towards their team's van, but unfortunately, JD fails to find the keys. So, he rushes to the control room to get the spare keys, leaving her alone. Emma quickly locks all the windows, and anxiously waits for her friend to return. But to her utmost horror, Rohan is revealed to be sitting in the back seat, and she impulsively stabs his hand with a screwdriver and runs away. Rohan screams in pain, and here his true character is revealed, he, too, is an actor, and all the crew members are still alive. The actual victim is none other than poor Emma. Rohan, who is in extreme agony, shouts at Marcus for his predicament. The latter tries to calm him down, but Rohan angrily cuts the transmission, saying he is done. After this, he decides to remove the screwdriver from his hand. But just as we think that the show is over, the real show begins, two creepy masked figures surround Rohan with cameras. The poor guy assumes they are part of the show, but the freaks prove him wrong by brutally finishing him off. Meanwhile, Marcus contacts his team members through the intercom and asks them to stay put for the time being, while he goes to confront Rohan and solve their differences. Tony continues to hide on the lower floors away from Emma, but Susie is nowhere to be found. Shortly after, when Dick is alone in the control room, he notices some weird glitches in the camera, and he tries to fix the monitor. Elsewhere, Emma arrives in a room, where she shockingly sees Dick's life feed on a laptop. When he spots her, he quickly turns off his camera, realizing his mistake. Seconds later, he finds himself surrounded by numerous masked men on the cameras. As they point their cameras towards him, one of them strangles him with a control pole, and slices his face off. On the other hand, a suspicious Emma begins investigating the laptop for clues. But to her dismay, she finds multiple videos, which reveal that everything was just a prank to victimize her. She angrily shouts at Marcus in front of the camera, asking him to show himself, but he doesn't reply back. Screw this. I'm done. Turns out some of the cameras there belong to the masked figures, and they start to make their move. Elsewhere, Marcus reaches the van to talk to Rohan, only to discover that he is dead. The scared Marcus tries to call for help, but his phone doesn't have any signal, and Dick doesn't respond. But then all of a sudden, he notices the masked figures approaching him slowly. He immediately recognizes them from the dark web video, and realizes that his team is in danger, so he runs away from there. Along the way, he bumps into Emma, who wastes no time punching him in the face. He tries to make her understand that Rohan is dead, and that they are actually in danger this time, but Emma doesn't believe him. Suddenly, the masked intruders arrive, and Emma tries to fight with one of them, assuming that they are part of the prank. But when the guy pushes her to the ground, she realizes that they are serious. The masked freaks then surround the couple, ready to finish them off. But then, one of them receives a message on his intercom, which prompts all of them to retreat. After they are out of sight, 
Emma tries to save Abby, and heads to her with Marcus. But when they arrive at where JD and Abby were resting, they find JD lying in a pool of blood. There is a camera attached to his mutilated stomach, and Marcus plays the first video. It shows how the killers barged into the room, killed JD, and forcefully took Abby away. The leader of the group then tells Marcus and Emma to go to the control room if they want to see the girl. With no options left, the duo does as asked. As they make their way towards the control room, Emma grabs a sharp weapon to defend herself. On arriving, Emma notices that Marcus' head is bleeding, but realizes that it is blood dripping from Susie, who is hanging on the ceiling. The hacked camera feed then shows Tony being sawed in half by one of the killers. As the duo watches in horror, the leader of the masked freak appears, and reveals that they are doing all this to please their audience. He explains that they are targeting the pranksters as it is the new entertainment. He then shows a video of Abby being buried alive in a coffin, and says that she will only have five minutes before she dies of asphyxiation. Alarmed, the duo rushes to the said location to save her. Along the way, they come across one of the killers who tries to attack them, and Emma ends up stabbing him with her weapon instead. When she takes off his mask, they are shocked to learn that he is just a kid. Following this, the two arrive at the location where Abby is buried, and manage to get her out of the coffin, saving her in the nick of time. But as they prepare to leave, the masked men show up, and surround them. The leader states that there is no happy ending, and surprisingly reveals that their viewers have requested them to keep Emma alive. Plus, she has the choice to save one of her friends. Upon hearing this, Marcus accepts his fate, as he lets Emma save Abby. Emma then brings Abby to the van, and escapes with her to get help as Marcus gets knocked out. In the final scene, Marcus wakes up in a room, where he sees one of his friends being cut open. He lashes out at the masked freaks for having no creativity but only cruelty, lacking any twist or substance. In response, he is shown a video, which reveals that Abby is also a part of the masked freaks. No, 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 I, I can do it again, I will do it again. Abby was actually the mole who disclosed their entire plan. Marcus is genuinely impressed by this twist, and he finally compliments the killers, and the masked killers carry Marcus on a stretcher into a furnace to be incinerated. On the other hand, we see the girls driving away in the dark. Emma notices a camera in the van, indicating that the prank seems to have not come to an end yet. Okay guys, that's all the recap of Scare Campaign 2016. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.